based on what I can see so far is some of them are moving, some of them are not. The ones that are not moving are the ones that are staying pressurized. The ones that move up and down are letting the oil come out. And that's what's called a collapsed lifter. So far it seems like probably half of them are moving. So I'm still leaning towards the lifters being a little stuck. So I'm gonna pull the intake side and then we'll pull them out and go from there. All right, I got all the cams out. Now time to pull the lifters. I brought a bunch of little individual trays so that I can keep them separated and in line so I know which one went where. I'm going to break them apart, clean them out, and then I'll show you where I'm at there. Got them all out, got them soaking. I'm going to slowly pull them apart one at a time, clean them out really good, make sure there's no particulate or dead oil in it, and then repressurize them one at a time, put them back where they go in the motor, then put the cams back in and uh, everything looks good. There's no galling, there's no metal bits in the oil. So that kind of tells me that I don't think it's a rod bearing or a piston because normally there would be chunks of aluminum or metal shavings in the oil itself. All the ends of the valves look good. Um, none of the springs are broken. So hopefully I'm right. It should just be the collapse lifters, but we'll never know until we get it back together and get it timed properly. Cause it looks like based on where the timing mark was down there, when I set timing up here, it looks like it was off down here. So I'm thinking the entire belt may have jumped a couple of teeth. I mean, this needs to be done anyway. It was ticking. So we'll get this done. We'll get it timed up and then we'll see what happens. All right, so that's a good sign. Only, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six out of 16 actually had oil in them. You can tell by the color of the fluid there, no oil came out of these guys and oil was pouring out of these guys. So that shows that these were all collapsed. All the front, looks like almost more than front half of the motor. So one through half of three were collapsed. So only the rear cylinder, number four, and the intake side of number three had oil in them. The rest of them were completely collapsed. So we'll get these cleaned up. We'll lube them up, fill them with oil, make sure they compress, and then we'll put them back in the car. Okay, once you get the cap completely cleaned out, there's also a little pinhole on one side. You need to blow that out real good, maybe even use a pick. So when you spray cleaner through it, it should be blowing out of the center here. And there was a lot of gunk and chunks and hard particulate stuck inside this lifter. So I'm willing to bet that this is the problem. Once you get done, you have this little plunger that came out of the middle. You know, you're going to have to pull it out with vice grips or something. Try not to mar it up, but it's not an actual contact part on the outside. It's just flat part is touching the top of the valve. So as long as you don't mar up the flat surface, you're fine. So you can grab it by the edges and pull it straight out of the bottom of this. And then once you get the plunger out, let me show you one here. It's going to look like this. And there's two pieces to this, the inner and the outer, and you should be able to squeeze it. And there'll, you'll see the flex, there's a spring in there. What you're gonna do is pull on the smaller piece out of the bigger piece and there'll be a spring, a little spring, a ball bearing, and a captive cup. And just put it back together the way that it came apart, but you need to clean out the inside of this real bad. This is where all the particulate gets trapped. Once you clean this out, put it back together, put it back into there the way it came out and then submerge it in one of these tanks full of oil and press it back and forth until no air bubbles come out. And you'll need to move it around and squeeze it multiple times until air stops coming out of the side port on the bigger outer cup. Once that's done, the lifter is rebuilt and ready to reinstall. Okay, so I got everything back together. Holy shit, I hate the wind. Anybody that knows me knows how much I can't stand fucking wind. That's just part of coming to someone else's house though and doing the work. But a couple of tiny little springs went shooting off in the wind, had to find those. That was a pain in the ass. Definitely do this indoors if you have the option. Got all of them back in, in order. They're all pressurized. Now I have to put the cams back in and set timing. So hopefully everything works out. Made a little bit of a mess, but whatever. I'll spray that off with some brake cleaner, should be fine. So I'm gonna get everything buttoned up and we'll go from there. So YouTube friends, that is how you do a, what is it called? Hydraulic lifter assembly. 
HLA, if you Google, or YouTube, um, Miata HLA replacement or maintenance or cleaning or uh, anyway, Miata HLA or lifters, as they're also called, hydraulic lifters. It'll show you some more in-depth details of what exactly it takes. This was just a brief summary. I was outside dealing with the wind and the potential rain coming later this afternoon, so I wasn't really trying to fuck around. I also forgot the GoPro, so it wasn't very convenient for me to just set up a running time lapse. So if you have any further questions about what goes into doing this maintenance or what to expect or what it sounds like before and after, just comment below. I may be able to get some other footage once he gets everything put back together and starts it. Otherwise, there are plenty of before and after videos already on YouTube. Again, just type in Miata HLA and you should be able to find one. But um, hopefully you guys liked the video. Comment below if you have any constructive criticism or anything you'd like to see or any questions or concerns. Like if you liked, subscribe if you want, and as always guys, keep on modding.